All right, let's talk flippers. And you can see that I've uh, set the SKS files to now have a cool black background. We don't need those crazy colors. All right, so what I'm gonna do is drag out a color sprite over here and I'm going to just put in here a texture of right flipper. And, oh, you know what? Just using the touchpad can sometimes manipulate the rotation. There we go. Get that back to zero. And we'll put this someplace that kind of makes sense for a flipper, right? All right, now, if you um, if you don't already have the uh, flipper assets in your game assets folder, which you probably don't, uh, go ahead and steal them from me. It's uh, easy to do. Download the uh, project from uh, session one, the end of session one, and uh, just right click, you can go over here to show and finder, and uh, you'll find a folder with the actual image, and all you gotta then do is just drag it from the finder in uh, to here, and you can see I've named mine right flipper, and a left flipper and if you were to look at the actual source file let me bring up uh, the flash file that I was working in for this it's it's gonna look something like this this is the actual size of the image including this uh, extraneous white data over here or basically just blank space it's not actually white uh, and that's because I wanted to get the um, center point of this image right at about here and you can see you even put in some guidelines for that uh, that are exactly about at half the uh, the screen size or the uh, f document size and um, the reason for that is even though you can adjust the anchor point in e Xcode which is essentially the center point of it for some reason that is not reflected in the um, the body of it and I'll demonstrate that to you guys in just a moment but um, so if, if you're if you want to create your own flippers which I'm sure you probably do uh, this is what you could do is you could take this image you could bring it into Photoshop and you could draw over it you know like so but as long as you keep you know the center part you know including this like rounded part over here ex exceeding that on that side uh, things are gonna work out pretty well and I, and I, th I don't think you'd have a problem doing something like uh, this you know, let's say you're just going to draw over it. All right. Um, so you're going to you know, keep that kind of over there. But then if you wanted to shorten it, you know, there's pinball has, uh, well, there's many different flipper types, but one of them looks a little bit more like this. Maybe I should be doing something like that. I forget the actual name of it. Uh, but, uh, it basically it's, it's used to describe these shorter flippers. Okay. Uh, I think most machines have, this one right here okay it's a little bit longer and I've um, meticulously traced over some flipper images uh, many times to get this there for you so anyway uh, just just keep that in mind and uh, let's head back over here to Xcode so back to our all right, yeah we're using the phone one for right now and there we go uh, let's call this uh, right flipper so it actually it's a more descriptive name and if you scroll down here you can go over here to your physics body definition and what we'll want to do is use alpha mask and you can see I'm gonna zoom in a little bit so it's maybe a little bit more obvious well it's maybe not that obvious well see that little blue outline over there uh, that's at the actual physics body um, for this uh, shape now this is so much easier than uh, when I did this back in the cocoa Coco's 2D days when I made a pinball game. Uh, you'd have to define the points using a separate program. You'd have to go uh, counterclockwise to define them. They couldn't be convex or anything like that or concave. I can't remember. And you can only do like eight of them. So this is really neat now that you can just click on Alpha Mask and it's going to give you this. Okay. Um, alternatively, you know, you can have bounding rectangle over here and that's going to actually be a rectangle representing the entire shape of the image. And of course, the uh, <laughs> bounding circle makes even less sense, right? Because that's <laughs> the shape you're going to get. So there you go. You've got alpha mask. And um, we are going to pin it, okay? We don't want this to be affected by gravity, but we do want to be able to uh, rotate it and, and have it be dynamic. Uh, what pinning it does is it, uh, it really just kind of puts it at or it locks it into, uh, for the most part, this location right here. So you can do things like, you know, pivot uh, pivot it up and things like that, but it's not gonna uh, kind of venture too much from this point. Uh, and I say that with a grain of salt. I, I'll sh show you something. I, a little hack <laughs> I put in here to uh, to make sure it doesn't go anywhere. But um, 
All right, so there you go. And uh, you'll notice, too, if we were to adjust the pivot or the anchor point, pivot point essentially, uh, let's put in here 0 0.5 and 0 0.5 are in the exact middle of the image, okay? So you can see that little kind of white dot right there. That's the exact middle of it. If I put this over here at 1, you'll notice that uh, now the anchor point is exactly on the far right side of the screen, and that's obviously where it took it. But as you can see, the physics body did not actually go along with that. So that's why we had to use our source images that uh, you know adjusted for it. So let's put that back at 0 0.5. Uh, and you can just go ahead and copy this out if you want and uh, type in here left flipper. And let's give it a name of left flipper. OK. And uh, yet again, you can see that the, um, the alpha data is you know, kind of perfectly around there. If you ever need to kind of reset things a little bit, say you've changed the images around, uh, you might actually have to go and close down Xcode, uh, which I had to do many times, uh, because in the scene file, it kind of caches the actual image data. So again, close down Xcode. Um, another thing you could try to do is like reach retexture it, like I just did, just essentially just put a new, you know, any other thing in there. But uh, all right, so we maintained the, uh, the same values that we had in there, dynamic, allows rotation, and pinned. And uh, all right, so. Let's take a look at the rotation. Um, obviously, this is not how flippers start, right? Uh, they are tilted down about 30 degrees. So let's put in here 30. Actually, for the left one, we want negative 30. And for this right one, we want 30. OK. So they're kind of opposites, right? This one's negative 30, and this one over here is 30. Uh, we'll have to note that as a. Um, those values in our flipper class, which I think we're right about to uh, make. So let's go over here to file, a new file. And this is going to be a Swift file. It's going to be a share between both of our targets. Doesn't really matter which Swift file we choose over there, just as long as it says Swift. And save as flipper.swift. Be sure both targets are checked off. Create that guy. And uh, let's see. Let's do this. Let's take it out of here and let's make, make a new group. Should have done new group from selection. We'll just call this uh, table classes, which is kind of essentially everything. There we go. So, right in Sprite Kit over here. And then we're going to write class. This is going to be our flipper class. And this is just the name that you put in over here. And this is going to be SK Sprite Node. So we're extending the capabilities of SK Sprite Node with some of our own. And uh, immediately after you've done that, head back over here to your scene file. And go over here to custom class. And of course, we're going to make that flipper. Same thing over here, flipper. OK, then head back over here to the flipper class. And we're going to make a function called setup. We're going to do this for a lot of our table classes. Actually, who knows? There might not be that many. Um, the um, Basically, the, the, the sprite node is additionalized uh, just by the very fact that it you know, we kind of added it to the screen or the scene. Um, so a lot of the initial setup has been taken care of. We don't really have to call a knit or anything like that. Uh, but what we are going to need to do is basically scan through the um, elements that we have in the scene. Uh, and if it comes across a flipper, then we're going to have to call this function uh, setup so it can do all the stuff that is uh, inside of here. So go uh, head over here to your uh, game scene dot swift file and all right, this is going to be something that uh, obviously we're going to do uh, regardless of uh, device. So outside of any sort of uh, if statements, we are going to iterate through all the children in the scene. And you know, if you want, uh, you could even peel this out and put it in a different function, so just so you can kind of. You know, actually, I haven't done that, but uh, let's in my notes, I haven't done that, but uh, let's do it here. So we're going to say set up children. So we're going to call this and. Um, I should say that this is actually a really good thing to do because there's always a lot that happens in your did move to view statements. And um, a lot of times you get a little bit confused about what's happening 
first, what's happening second. And um, so this way, you know, we could just put every all this stuff in one um, basically line. And then if we need to rearrange it, move stuff around, uh, we could do that, right? You know, for example, we might want to go, ooh, you know what? We need to set up our children before we establish the scene height. We really don't have to, but you know what I'm saying. All right, so set up children, and we're going to write for node in self.children. This is one of uh, many ways we can enumerate through all the children in the scene. This is maybe one of the more simple, simpler ones. And we're going to say if let flipper equals node as flipper. All right, and let's explain that line. Uh, basically, if, um, if we can set up the current node that we've basically scanned, all right, because it's going through all the ones in the scene, uh, as this particular class, then we know it's actually that flipper, right? And we've only got two children in the scene right now anyway, but um, so the only two in there are actually these flippers. But if we had another one, this line is not going to pass. This if statement isn't going to work, all right? But if it does, that means that this little instance variable representing that flipper, that node, um, can call flipper dot setup. Okay, so if we try to just say node dot setup, right, you're gonna notice that nothing's getting filled in over here, which is always a bad sign. We couldn't do this, all right, because just sk node doesn't have a function in it called setup, but our flipper does. Okay, so it realizes, okay, it's got the, I'm a, I'm a flipper. I can call this particular function. And uh, for now, uh, we can then head back over here to our flipper file. And uh, the next thing on the flipper train, the next stop is going to be to deal with our upper and lower uh, rotations. So we're going to say var upper rotation. This is going to be a CG float variable. This is going to equal zero for now. And then our lower rotation. CG float is going to equal zero, and we are going to put in here if self dot name equals uh, flipper writes, and you know what? I can't remember if did I call this flipper write or write flipper. Uh, that's the custom class. I'm referring to the actual name. Uh, you know what? Let's do this. Let's reverse these around a little bit. That way, if you are scanning through the elements in your scene, like through here. So if you get a lot of stuff in here, right? Maybe something's on top of another thing. You can't reach your flipper. Let's say you had a big old, I don't know, half transparent glass screen over top of this. You'd have a tough time selecting the flipper. And an alternative to selecting it through here, just clicking on it, is to go to SK Scene, and you can see this lists out all of your um, nodes. All right, so this way, if you can just go F for flipper. I'm going to go down to my Fs and find the flippers. That way, you're done going right, left, things like that. All right, so uh, let's cut back over here to the uh, flipper class. <laughs> So you don't remember where this stuff is. And then, all right, so we've got if self.name equals flipper right, and then we're gonna do a corresponding else if statement, if it is flipper left, and in which case what we're gonna do is say upper rotation is gonna equal a negative 30 for the right flippers, and the lower rotation is gonna equal 30, uh, and then of course the opposite will be true for our left guys. So take that, put that over here, and then even though they're currently set at those rotations, what we're going to do is we're going to set the uh, Z rotation to B. So we're going to kind of hard code in that uh, they're going to automatically go to their lower rotations. And actually, I don't need to put that in there. Uh, what I do need to do is write a function that uh, converts the, these are in degrees, to radians because you'll notice that, here, let me type this out again so I get the code hinting. See the Z rotation over here? The Euler rotation about the Z axis, wah, 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 in radians. Even though, <laughs> even though if you go over here, right, this is clearly in degrees. <laughs> All right, so. Thank you, and uh, now we've got to convert something from degrees to radians. Well, uh, I ain't no mathematician, but uh, 
did happen to find <laughs> how to do that. All right, so I'm just going to paste in here, uh, it, paste in two functions. You might as well have both of them. Radians to degrees and degrees to radians. In both cases, what we're doing is we're passing in a CG float value, and it is giving us back out or returning to us a CG float value. And you'll notice the difference between going from radians to degrees and degrees radians is you just multiply whatever you passed in times 180 divided by that magical number of pi. And then in the opposite case, it's degrees times the pi is in the front negative or divided by 180 over here. Okay, so uh, once you've done that, you can then write uh, degrees to radians and then you pass in the lower rotation. And same thing is going to be true over here. So again, going to the lower rotation. The only difference is, of course, that these are the opposite numbers. And uh, just for giggles, let's go and uh, let's just move these around a little bit. All right, so put them in some awkward position. And uh, then when we test on the iPhone, because that's the one we that it's the only one right now that actually has uh, elements in its scene file. They should lock into their lower rotations. And I think I'm going to have to show you guys this scale down at, OK, well, looks like things worked aside from the fact that these the images, uh, and I know exactly what the problem is. I, I imported these images into the game assets folder that is still currently only for the TV. So let's uh, go fix that. Go over here and uh, click on your iOS target. Just be sure it's the iOS one. Go over here to your build setting, build phases, and under copy bundle resources, what we want to do is click this little plus sign and then go grab that uh, game assets folder. And then you can see that uh, the next time, or hopefully the next time this runs, we get actual flippers. Okay, there we go. And I had, I've seen this error before. It's I think I don't think it's anything to worry about. And uh, now we've got um, you know some uh, some flippers that are pointed in their correct directions. Okay, so um, we've got seventeen. All right, we're at seventeen minutes. Let's do this. Uh, let's close down and um, come back with the continuation of our epic flipper, well, class, for now.